Hello everyone, hope you're doing well, and welcome to a brand new episode of Let's Argue Osu Edition. This is a series where I ask you guys for your hot takes, unpopular opinions and tough questions, and answer the best ones in videos such as this one. It's been a while since I've done one of those, so I'm curious to see what the Osu community is thinking in 2023. Let's get started. Are you ready to admit Wooting is a necessity in 2023? Every top player who's used it has improved drastically and there is no reason for anyone in any rank range to use any other keyboard. Look, I love the Wooting, I think it's fantastic, I even declared it the best gaming keyboard on the market. Go watch that review if you haven't. But nothing is a necessity. This whole obsession with gear has existed since the very beginning of Osu. The very first philosophical debate was mouse versus tablet, then everyone wanted to be like Kukizi, so everyone bought the CM Storm Quick Fire TK, and when Rafis started playing AR11, all of a sudden 144Hz became the norm. Now it's all about the wooting. The truth is, as a beginner, no equipment is really going to make that big of a difference. I've seen people with the most insane setups, gaming chair, big RGB desk, tablet, 240Hz monitor, wooting, and they still suck. In the end, it's all about how much time you spend playing the game, improving. However, I will say this, if you have a nice looking setup, but you're bad, you can always start a career on Osu TikTok and bask in all the Chinese bots views on TikTok. Speaking of equipment, my room is in shambles right now. It's filled to the brim with packages of all shapes and sizes, so I created a little page on Google Sheets where I'm selling a ton of keyboard stuff. Keyboards, keycaps, switches, various accessories, even Fumos. Everything is basically brand new or used once. I still cleaned it. And prices are dirt cheap because I'm really just trying to get rid of them. So if you're from Europe, because shipping is on you, get in touch, buy my stuff. The best way to do it is by sending me a DM on Discord. Do not add me as a friend, your friend request will be lost in time forever. My DMs are open, so just slide in there. Thank you very much. Rapid Trigger raises the skill floor for speed so much that it's demotivating not having it. Oh, there we go. There's another one. It doesn't increase your raw speed, but it lets you use it for free, $200 plus shipping, by eliminating the need to work on technique. You just move your fingers at the BPM without worrying about an actuation point. I don't understand what you're saying. Raises the skill floor for speed, I'm with you on that. Doesn't increase your raw speed, true, but it lets you use it for free. Use what? You're talking as if speed is something that's hidden within us and it can only be at least to proper tapping technique, but it's not really like that. If you can move your fingers at the BPM you desire, wouldn't that mean you already got the speed for it? What does technique have to do with any of this? I don't know if I'm missing something, but I'm generally puzzled by this message. Maybe you guys can explain it in the comments and discuss it, perhaps. If South Korea military service did not exist, they would be more dominant in OWC than the United States, or they would at least trade wins with them. That's an interesting one. I don't like thinking in hypotheticals. Oh, you know, hey, if that player missed, the other team would have won. But I will say, OWC 2023, looking pretty doable for South Korea. No offense to the US of A, but we are not in a TWC Japan situation where it's sheer dominance all the way. Last year, many matches were close, and if you really think about it, it was thanks to Utami that they won a lot of picks. He was the deciding factor. So assuming he's not playing and is not replaced by Vaxei, South Korea could very well have a chance. Karcher, worst hard rock player, Zaisen, the entire lineup to be honest, and Flying Tuna is back, so we could have something. We could have something. Some freak sent me a pastebin link, a whole paragraph on how much Osu tournaments suck. My man, this is YouTube, the attention span is about as low as it gets, you need to be a bit more concise. Osu tournaments, they ruin your weekend. They ruin your week, because you're forced to practice the worst map pools imaginable, which are way too over-specialized, they're, they're not even maps that actually exist, they are specifically designed to be annoying. Mappers, 
Why do you do this? What happened to having fun in tournaments? Why do you take your dread and hatred for this world and just put them into maps? Why do you do that? But this is the message if you guys want to read the entire thing. He also talks about some gaming rankings which I know nothing about, so... Yeah. Also players are too addicted to play to improve the YouTube content scene. The only reason streaming is so popular compared to YouTube is because it takes zero effort. I don't know. I feel like Osu isn't necessarily the best when it comes to content. Not many people can squeeze something interesting out of what is ultimately a very simple game conceptually. It, it's a rhythm game. It makes sense for people to stream more because it's very fun to be good at the game and to do so while streaming in front of a community, talking to people in chat, being interactive. It makes sense, it's good times, so I recommend streaming actually, very fun to do. PP will never be your future waifu or a girlfriend, period. You don't know that. She's real. Just like Hatsune Miku. I saw her. At the store. I'm saying, hello Spaza. I came up with a science-based schedule for Osu improvement. Oh boy. And would like to hear what you think. Monday is a speed day. Tuesday I rest. Wednesday aim. Thursday rest. Friday hard rock. Saturday and Sunday rest. You've watched too many digital hypno videos. You need to go back. The second you start thinking about science when it comes to us improvement, you're gone, you're done, you're overthinking, take a break. I want you to take one week break, do not play the game, and when you come back, just enjoy yourself. This is how you sound like right now, you sound like an insane person, you are playing three times a week, and you say this is the best way to improve. No, it's not. You know, Spaza, I skipped dinner once because I was trying to come up with a new tapping technique called cucumber tapping, and I've noticed that as I was starving to death, I was actually much faster. Could it be that water fasting is the truth to speed? Go have a walk in the mountains, reflect, do some meditation, and when you come back, just slowly increase the skill cap. That's all you gotta do. Stop overanalyzing what you do. This is the worst thing you can do. We are in the shredding era now, there's no more space for overanalyzing. Just shred, push your limits, don't hurt yourself, and you're good to go. I don't want to hear any more science-based facts when it comes to Osu. There's no science in this game, or math, or anything that goes beyond anime knowledge. PP should be completely based on accuracy. 95% FC shouldn't be worth more PP than a 99% choke. Combo is a useless metric, a relic of the past that people got attached to. You know, as a former Osu standard monkey, I used to think combo was everything, but now that I'm playing the superior game mode Taiko, I realized just how much better their PP system really is. All that matters in Osu Taiko is accuracy and miscount. Combo doesn't really have that much weight. And you know, that's not a bad thing for Taiko, but I feel like in Osu standard it would make things way less hype. For example, I have a ton of DT scores where I miss somewhere or shit miss somewhere and then FC everything else including all the art parts. And obviously since the nerves are gone at that point, I am able to FC everything and end up with a 1 miss 99% score. So should that score really be worth as much as an FC or nearly as much as an FC? I don't know. I will say combo scaling is a bit extreme now, but to straight up remove it, I think it's a bit too much. A nice balance would be nice. Farming isn't good. Somehow people in the Osu community think that farming for ranks slash PP is good. But in my opinion, anyone should just play the maps that are fun, that you vibe to, etc. And that you shouldn't necessarily just play the game just because PP. Somehow this is a hot take. You are coping, my friend. Did you lose all your stamina typing this message because you're one of those people who only plays 140 BPM tech slider maps? Believe it or not, farming for ranks, depending on your skill set, is pretty fun. It's great to improve, farming helps you push your skill cap, become better. If all you wanna do is vibe, then go for it, but saying that farming isn't good, nah, 
na na na. Just like that one guy who came up with a scientific schedule, my only recommendation is to shred. Shred now. Right now. Farming is good for you. I love it, it's good. Good for us, good for everyone. What's your take on the Osu goat debate? Emrek versus Kukizi. I think Emrek is the goat. A hundred percent. He's good at everything. He's the best player we've ever had. He sets scores that are basically impossible for anybody else. And his recent win at the round table just further solidifies that. However, however, imagine this. Tomorrow, Emrek comes online. He types a single message in the Osu chat saying goodbye and cheats a completely ridiculous score, even for his standards. Something like Galaxy Collapse DTSS. Hopefully that's not doable. He gets banned, and from that point, it's radio silence. Emrek just disappears off the face of the earth. So then, Lifeline becomes number one, probably going to receive a ton of hate for no reason. And all the other players, they keep playing, but nobody really catches up. And every time someone sets a cool score, there will always be people who point out how Emrek did this a number of years ago. All people can really do is watch Emrek's plays on YouTube, and hear people's stories about how they felt watching him play live. Emrek becomes this sort of mystical figure that you can see, but you know he was the dominant one and he inspires entire generations of players. And then he gets unbanned. And not only is he just as good as before, he's actually 10 times better. He starts sniping everyone, he beats his own scores, he beats all the competition with ease, and on the same day, he not only gets the PP record, he also reaches rank 1 again. That's what Kukizi did. That's some anime shit right there, he quite literally changed the game, you can't beat that. So, Osu wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be nearly as big. He inspired me, I certainly wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Kukizi, so... While Emrek is undoubtedly the GOAT, Kukizi is quite literally Osu. He goes beyond. He's the legend. That is pretty much going to be it for today. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, leave a comment down below, let me know your thoughts. And if you'd like to see more content just like this, feel free to subscribe. The end of July is near, which means COE is coming soon. For those of you that don't know, COE is the world's largest Osu convention. I made a whole video about that. Go check that out if you haven't. It's taking place in the Netherlands from July 31st to August 6th, so if you'd like to meet a lot of top OSU players and content creators such as myself, I'm there all week. You can buy your tickets on cowboyboy.com, I'll leave the link in the description. I'll try to squeeze out one last video before COE, I don't guarantee anything but I'll try my best and that's all that really matters. So buy my keyboards, please. Link is down. I'll go. See you next time. And have a good one, guys.